Let's see if this is going to work. Are we in? Are we in? Oh, we are in. Nice. Whew. Okay. Trap pops out. <laughs> Let's check it. Oh, lag, lag. Is this lagging? What's going on? Are we good? <laughs> How's it going? How's connection? That's oh, our connection. It seems okay now. Nice. Let's check it out. Nice. I'm sitting here munching on <laughs> yeah, I choose and trying to figure this out. <laughs> okay. So it seems like we're back. Yes. Yes, I have a motion picture and continuous sound. Nice. Good, 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 good. Okay, awesome. I think we lost a whole bunch of people. It's 20 minutes <laughs> when we're supposed to be streaming. Uh, it's good, it's good. Airman J23. Salutations, gang. I think we're going to have to give people a little bit of time to come back. Everything's pretty smooth right now. Awesome. Okay, good, 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 good. I had to restart uh, a few times. Everything's pretty smooth. Okay. Okay. Is it the UFOs? <laughs> yeah. Who knows what uh, what they're doing over here? Uh, give me a ciggy. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. I love your map. Thank you, Slick Mick. I love it as well. Jalen, how are you doing, friend? Missed your last. Oh, Jalen, it was a good live stream. We're doing a continuation of it. Alien scum annihilated. <laughs> Nagushka, how are you doing? Konnichi, konnichiwa, konnichiwa. Fun. Okay, so we're live. Okay, that's good. It's not lagging. I had to start OBS uh, connect up using a different, it's got two different choices. I'm gonna do my little intro as, uh, well, give people a little bit of time to roll in uh, again. Oh, we're back. Yeah. Kafmet Fika. Hope you're doing well. And welcome to another live stream. Let's see. I doubt it if notifications are going to go out multiple times. I can't see it happening. All right. But let me give my little intro and then we get down to business. We get down to business. Gang, apologies about the delay. Today, 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 we are live and it's February kebabs. How are you doing? February 13th, 2023. And we're doing part two of mapping global conflicts. Uh, we did all this last week and we're continuing the discussion. Okay. Um, uh, I think it's important. There was a lot of stuff going on and we talked a little bit about plate tectonics and stuff. Uh, so. Uh, some of the stream was spent uh, doing a little bit of uh, earth science, uh, what we know about the globe. Slick Mick, I don't love the fact that so many conflicts exist in the world to, uh, to constitute mapping them all out. But maybe it's, a na it's naive to assume there could be any other way than conflict. Uh, I think there is. It's just, uh, I'm going to read you something that I wrote uh, in 2014, 13, my last Strictly Geopolitics thing. Uh, but I think what, what, what it does for us right now when we're mapping this out, we're getting the feel, like a visual feel of where we are specifically, right? Because it's going to affect us. Like if I was living here, I'd be concerned, right? Western Europe, Eastern Europe, I would be concerned right middle east too that's heating up as well right so it's part of self-preservation to a certain degree to look at a map and figure out what's going on in the world and i think it's important and the board is changing shifting rapidly rapidly we're about to go through another phase i think of uh, uh global order if you want to call it okay global order if you're going to call it uh Plutonka, that was uh, only a small lag for me yeah i think the lag was happening on everyone hopefully uh, still we're still going okay mm -hmm. yeah it seems to be streaming okay from my end if it uh if it locks up please let me know in the chat gang 
I'll uh, check into it. Uh, stick mic, oh yes, definitely very important to map map it out and to be aware about these things. It's just a shame that so many conflicts do exist. Let me, let me since we're talking about this slick mic, um, let's, uh, let me read you something uh, that is gonna lay it out for you is why it is that uh, we start getting into geopolitics and stuff. You know, back in 2016, I started getting back into it, making videos because people were specifically asking about the US elections. But then it became clear three years ago, four years ago, that we need to continue this and look at it hardcore, all right? Oh, give me a second. I see a lot of pins on Europe. Oh, yeah, indeed, availability. Neighbor woke me up, so looks like it's time to watch stream. Awesome, awesome. Micro twist, how are you doing? A dancing somebody, dancing party. <laughs> and gang, uh, just as a quick intro, we're on Patreon, Substack, Subscribe Star. We're live streaming on Twitch. <laughs> Via want some cuddles. Um, we're on Twitter, Gab, VK, Mines. Getter and Parlor. Okay. Uh, for live streams where we don't have any visuals, we do upload the audio to SoundCloud. Uh, we will be uploading this to SensorTube, to BitChute, to Rumble and Odyssey. We did part one. We will do part two as, as well. And we have a Gilded server. You're definitely welcome to join us on our ser server and talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. Maybe global conflict related or not. Okay. Uh, we do have multiple folders. Finish dude. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Uh, Jalen, I was watching the last stream yesterday and I wanted uh, to point out that South America uh, Mount Roro Ro, Ro, Rayma, lots of the animals are more related to African animals that, uh, than below them in the rest of South America. Uh, South America. So I heard. Okay, yeah. There's like you can follow here. Let me take these guys out. And gang, for those of you that are supporting this work on all of our platforms, thank you for your support. As you know, as I continue to say, uh, there's no way we could be doing this work without your support. So gang, thank you, thank you, thank you. And especially to the mods gang, thank you for being here and taking care of business. Let me take these guys down. Because one thing we talked about last stream, might as well talk, just finish this off a little bit. Regarding plate tectonics, we talked about, you know, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, plate tectonics, volcanic activity. Well, volcanic activity follows the, uh, the plates colliding and stuff like this and separating of course, and earthquakes and whatnot. We talked about how the plates used to be all together in one formation and separation because of plate tectonics occurred, right? And how this fit into here. Now, it's more than just how the shapes fit into each other. The geology fits into each other. Like you can pick up uh, geologic structures from Africa that continue on in Americas, right? And as uh, Nagushka mentioned, or was it John that mentioned, there are animals that are related to each other. The fossil remains continue from this to this, right? And this occurs all over the place with plate tectonics. Okay, just want to clear that up or add that since it came up again, right? What characterizes a conflict? Good question. Good question, right? What do the colors mean? Here's what the colors mean, gang. Orange, uh, sorry, red is a hot war. Okay, red is a hot war. Orange is countries that are supporting hot wars. Okay. Yellow, we're categorizing as civil wars. Okay. They could also be proxy wars, like Ethiopia. Okay, Ethiopia we're categorizing as a civil war, but it was also a proxy war, okay? So civil war, proxy war, they're sort of merging together in the same sentence. Uh, it could be full on civil war to a certain degree, but right now, just looking at this, you look at Somalia, civil war. Ethiopia, I would say more of a proxy war than a civil war. Sudan, proxy war. Congo, hot war proxy war okay nigeria civil war possibly proxy war okay 
Mali, France was involved. Proxy war or civil war, right? So it's a fine line, fine line. Hot war is red. Hot war, hot war, hot war. Okay. Has something uh, been pinpointed in Lebanon yet? Yeah, Lebanon we put uh, s sort of, uh, it's a hot war proxy war and it's a civil war as well in Lebanon, right? So Lebanon is definitely a civil war as well, but it's also a hot war and a proxy and, and supporting war. So it's, Lebanon is, there's so many hands in Lebanon, it's hard to, hard to really narrow it down to one thing it's all of them put together right all of them put together okay availability been keeping an eye on the uh, prepper channels uh, when La Palma went bonkers last year spent time between that and now look at uh, look at prepper channels uh, prepper channels are fucking delusional almost 90 percent of them are sensationalizing issues and outright making shit up one guy drew up a map and said that russia would invade the baltics because nato has no balls oh god yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of hype a lot of people that maybe have jumped into this this fray just recently in the last year two years three years maybe and they're new to the game at play right so maybe inside they actually do feel like an urgency that is happening and we do we, we have a on the gilded server we have on our gilded server we have a world war three folder right a channel where like we've talked about this we're war we're we're in world war three there's no doubt about it and it's starting in europe again okay the third world war uh how much of an urgency is it depends on where you live depends on where you live right uh joe chicho last time we were uh debating about what to do with uh, new zealand yeah 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 they had sent military aid to ukraine uh so it should be orange should be orange let's do orange and gang i want to read you something before we really get deep into this okay there's one thing i want to read you uh and it's and thank you for that, uh, Joe. So New Zealand, we're at a, oh, my orange, here we go, there's orange. And there's no doubt New Zealand is part of the, well, as part of the, what do you call it? The five eyes or six eyes, some people would like to say. And there's no way New Zealand will get involved in anything that, Western Europe gets involved in. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. A LARP are so many countries and uh, continents, yeah. Uh, but Deep 64. Oh, yeah, let's read about Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon really is the most Western, Eastern country out there. It has always been un, uh, unstable, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it used to be known as the Paris of the Middle East, Beirut, right? It's got Christian, it's got both types, both branches of Islam, right? Sunni and Shia, okay? And it's got secular, right? So Lebanon has four major branches. Um, the Christian sect collaborated with uh, uh, Israel to commit genocide on Palestinians. There's a huge Palestinian population there. Of course, right? And Palestinians aren't all, all Muslim. There's Christian Palestinians as well. Uh, there's Armenians there. there there's a lot. Uh, Lebanon is a very unique place. It could be, it, if it's left, if it was left alone, it would be literally uh, the Paris of Eastern, uh, of Middle East. But it hasn't been left alone, right? Uh, Larkbar, it's amazing what the world has to offer. Indeed. Nagushka, I'm interested in exploring fully at uh, Antarctica and if there's land beyond uh, beyond there without any jackboots interfering. Yeah, I would love to look at into it, but I would have to do a lot of research into it as well. Antarctica, right? It's a huge continent. 
and there's been a lot of stuff going on there right lot prime minister of new zealand has flown to antarctica multiple times schwab world economic forum have flown there uh, politicians from the united states have flown there multiple times okay multiple politicians uh, Lebanon the Switzerland of the Near East but plagued by tri tribalistic civil war since a long longer time ago it's not just tribalistic civil war it's also proxy okay Lebanon is a proxy uh, everybody's got a hand on Lebanon okay Jalan Mexico is a mess um, I don't know how it got like uh, like other than the cartels uh that it's sad really so much culture and beautiful beautiful there's also a ton of resources and that's the key it's no wonder my family came here to do this yeah jalan you you answered it yourself it's got tons of resources right if you have tons of resources you better be strong like russia right you better be isolated and be the lapdog of the superpower like Canada right so Canada became a lapdog of the United States a long time ago right uh, there used to be a certain amount of Canadian pride right now uh, only a small percentage of Canadians really understand what Canadian is okay uh, unfortunately unfortunately stick me also time to hold uh, Janin, Janin, the account in the Western politicians need to be hold, held accountable. Uh, with them, 64, by the way, what are the sides of the Lebanon civil war? Hezbollah allies versus uh, plus allies versus Lebanese forces. Um, Owit, Owit, is that what it's called? Uh, plus allies, yeah, there's the four, five really uh, factions. There's also Syria. Is a huge huge role to play in Lebanon right yeah plutonic says is Mexico kind of parted between North and South Mexico regarding cartel civil culture indeed the in Mexico in Mexico northern Mexico you got a lot of cartels and stuff like this that basically a lot of them uh, are working hand in glove with the DEA uh, fast and furious guns being sent sent to mexico to certain cartels by the u.s government trying to you know centralize more power right because what is imperialism really has done throughout the centuries i mean the best example was africa where the europeans when they wanted a certain resource in a certain region let's say congo right for them to get that stuff out they had to go through multiple tribes make a deal or they were going to bring build train tracks and stuff through make a deal with multiple tribes to be able to get those resources out while the europeans went the hell with that we're going to take a minority in a certain area okay make a deal with them arm the shit out of them right and tell them you've been persecuted for a long time by these other tribes or you want to expand your land or you guys are whatever right convince them that western europe is going to arm no support them finance them as long as they can subdue the natives if you want to call it in a certain region so the european powers can come and extract the resources right that's the history of africa basically the only country that i know of that they weren't able to do this was ethiopia really right and that has multiple reasons associated with it right so that's what they do that's what certain powers do when they want to go into a region that's too complicated they want to centralize power because it's easy to corrupt the central power right and to make deals with the central power and extract resources to get them to do whatever you want that's why there are people here and here that are globalists because they want to centralize everything in the globe to davos and the united states so london united states davos western powers control everything well guess what asia has something to say about that russia has something to say about that 
the Middle East has something to say about that and Africa saying fuck you right that should be clear by now right that's why Libya was destroyed right Gaddafi came in and said oh we're gonna come up with a African currency backed by gold oil water right pretty stable the most high standard living in all, all of Africa what did Europe and the United States do and Canada right they annihilated Libya with slave labor right they cannot allow they cannot allow Western powers cannot allow right the global south any country to become strong enough to to create a cooperative to create a collective within a region right where all the different countries and factions are working together for their own prosperity right that's the game at play and that's exactly what's going on in mexico in northern mexico in southern mexico you have the indigenous tribes really a lot of them in power right so the cartels as far as i know they're not as active down here as they are up there because the money's here the cartels make their money by feeding the beast right the consumption beast right that's a given right and human trafficking and what do you call the united states for people that have been trying to get out of the conflict zones right i missed a fair bit of chat sorry gang on chart days how are you doing i'm scrolling down i'm scrolling down gang uh, ba, 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 ba. okay now gang again let me before we continue on i do want to read you guys something okay let me give you a link i'm going to read you a few paragraphs okay a uh, few of the last paragraphs of an article that i wrote in 2014 and i titled this article what did i title this article i titled this article synopsis of of our present predicament what the future holds a final word and i wrote this in 2014 okay and it's a long piece sort of i took parts from other articles that i've been writing and here's the link okay and basically for me i I started blogging about politics in 2005 2006 because I could see where we were going which was global warfare or war war and I really didn't want to go there who wants to be in a global war right it's insanity it's I mean the only people that want to be there are the psychopaths right and I wrote this because from 2005 2006 I wrote a lot of articles in addition to making starting making math videos in 2007 right I wrote a lot of articles and in 2014 I sort of said okay I've said what I need to be said I've given the warning I've compiled the information this is where we are if we don't wise up this is where we're going so I'm going to read you the last little part of this article okay uh, John and Chicho what do you think about the multiple objects being shot down I think it's carrots dangling distraction to this okay two digital currencies being rolled out right two provinces in Canada already said no right two provinces in Canada already said no let me read you these last few paragraphs I wrote and you can read the whole article and I'll link it in the description of the video once this live stream is uploaded to the other platforms okay so starting off towards the bottom of the article coding okay the article myself I guess if we only appreciated and understood what it meant when we were told that war is a racket and that all wars are bankers wars quote war is a racket it has it always has been it is possibly the oldest easily the most profitable surely the most vicious it is only it is the only one international in scope it is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives end quote and this is general smetley butler war is a racket okay and i we did a full reading of this book 
and I put a little bit of the mathematics on there, which I don't smutly, but there was saying, and I link up the video in the bottom of this paragraph. So the additional paragraph in this is this, additional information and quotes about about and from General Smedley Butler, available at General Smedley Butler, quotes of war, patriotism, and more, okay? And then I link up the video. <laughs> the article continues. Back to quoting myself. <coughs> Collect collectively, quote, collectively, we have been lulled into obedience, become selfish and self-centered, delusional sadistic beings beings fearing our own shadows and totally out of touch with reality our collective ignorance is what our governments have banked on that the severity of our stupidity will hold will hold steadfast as they commit genocides and collapse 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 economies unfortunately so far they have been brilliant tacticians since psychopaths still govern our daily lives and corporations continue to convince us to consume what we do not need or so is the doctrine of compliance that they they are trying to instill upon us and then i quote someone in this and quote somebody else now okay to make visible the invisible war tikhan argues that like the young girl archetype we are commodities commodities products and agents of capital caught in an invisible war in which we are our own oppressors end quote okay i continue the article quoting myself now when i think of all this and more the only fathomable excuse that comes to mind as to why we have forfeited so much the only words that bring me comfort regarding our collective insanity comes from George Carlin pointing out that the cause of our ills is because half of humanity is dumber than the average person. And then quoting Carlin, think of how stupid the average person is and realize half of them are stupider than that. That's a George Carlin quote. I continue. Why George Carlin's words bring me comfort is because they imply that the problem has a solution, education, Hence my work on mathematics, the alternative that we are aware of our history and are indifferent to it is unthinkable. Since I have no desire to document the play-by-play -play symphony of carnage that is being unleashed and is to come, and since I have said what needed to be said, or as Aaron Dottie Roy would say, quoting Aaron Dottie Roy, I feel that I don't have anything direct to say without repeating myself, end quote will consider this post to be the introduction to politics on chicho and it will be the last strictly geopolitical discussion we have on this site for quite some time at least until russia china iran or another formidable enemy of our choosing or making is duped into directly confronting nato or until the next major false flag operation sends the world into a frenzy if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to send me a message or post a comment. You, you can find additional information in the politics and economic sections of the table of content. Some of the more prop popular posts can be found in the right hand column of the site, Peace Chicho. Okay. Why am I reading this? The reason I'm reading this is because my warning was triggered. Okay. Russia was forced into confronting nato in ukraine and that's a worst case scenario really from what i was laying out okay in 2014 it was clear that that's the direction nato the western governments western world was going in because of the coup in ukraine that the coup in ukraine really triggered it it shows where where they were going with it right the nato backed coup in ukraine that really is the catalyst that has brought us to this point okay i just wanted to read that uh just in case people haven't seen it before heard me say it before haven't read that okay 
Evil Tolp, how are you doing? Elder God quote. In short, the main problem with our society is that our education system is designed to instill obedience, and it has done so extremely well. We have willingly consumed uh, consumed propaganda to the point where our hypnosis has turned us into servants of totalitarian regimes. And Al Qaeda says, love this part. And that's a quote from the article I wrote, right? And that's the reason I really began. Not the reason I began, but the reason I continue my work with mathematics. I began making the math videos is because to help out a family member. And I started getting feedback when I upload the videos. People saying, this is great. So I continued that work. And the reason I continue to make these educational videos is because George Carlin told us what it's going to take. Half of humanity is dumber than the average person. That's not fucking good. We need to raise the education level of our societies in regards to mathematics, economics, politics, history, society, everything, everything, especially, especially, especially in Canada, United States. Gang, straight up, I'm from here. I've taught a lot of people, uh, interacted with a lot of people in regards to mathematics from the United States and Canada. Our education system in these two countries is zero. It is indoctrination. It is garbage. My recommendation to anyone that has children in school or you're thinking about putting your children in centralized indoctrination centers, do not do it. You're creating cannon fodder for the globalists. Okay, don't do it. It has completely collapsed. Okay. Afro is back again. Hello, hello. It's all about money, 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 in my humble opinion. The worst, I don't know what that is. Get the more uh, more money certain people make. Yeah. Oh, God, my friend and family are all zombies. Yeah, I know a lot of zombies. A lot of zombies. Give me a Siggy. Show them, Chicho. They'll switch back right away. Availability. Education can be fun. And enjoyable but it's been uh, corrupted by so much toxic policies and strategies indeed you're like a weatherman with a forecast of doom I love this channel this model <laughs> there is a lot of amazing stuff happening to it and it's not all doom but there's uh, strong storms coming bunker down bunker down availability i've talked to people who trust anything even if if it's a theory just because it comes from centralized education yeah it's garbage and by the way gang kids know this i have i have discussions i had a discussion with uh, um one of my students as a family friend uh family friends old school family friends kid that i'm teaching mathematics right <laughs> She talked about the woke culture, uh, the woke indoctrination in school, right? And I asked her, I go, well, how do you feel about this? This wokeness thing that they're teaching in school. She goes, Chicho, it, it's stupid. And I said, yeah, it's, it's very dumb, low IQ stuff, right? She goes, yeah, yeah. I go, well, how do, how do your friends feel about this? She goes, Chicho, they all think it's stupid. The only people who care about this are the teachers, right? straight up she's like grade eight right she's turning to me and saying all and this isn't just from her all of my students have said this all of them right the ones that i've talked to this about about this to them right they all agree no one cares about this wokeness it's just forced down their throat by the system uh, by the teachers by the bureaucrats by the politicians right by people who have an agenda, who don't care about education of children, okay, who want to pursue their own agendas, right? Who want to indoctrinate children into their own dogmas and ideology. This is not an education system. This is an indoctrination system, and it's unfortunately some some kids will believe this BS, and they become cannon fodder. Okay, they become cannon fodder, right? Unfortunately. Chichiro drinking a bal balketa. I don't know what a balketa is. This is uh, this is uh, 
um, cherry juice, organic unsweetened cherry juice with soda. This is really yummy. I'm taking a break from uh, alcohol. Right. As I said before, I watched this channel back in um, 2016-17 and I thought he was just a math teacher until recently. <laughs> no, math is it. If you can do anything, like best recommendation for you on a personal finance level, on any level, is learn your mathematics. Now look at our trans, uh, transsexual education videos are being shown to my niece in Australia. My sister showed no concern about it. The kids don't care. Putanka uh -huh. Chicho is the Mark Fable of <laughs> my apology. Romantic walks to KFC. Are you still eating KFC? Don't do it, man. Don't do it. You look like a martial arts teacher with a phenomenal skincare routine. <laughs> My skincare routine is don't put anything on the skin. <laughs> also, also, I don't. Yeah, I really don't. Don't do too much on that front. Availability, the trans uh, pronoun ideology has been brute force into education with little to no regard for objective reality. People can believe what they want when they're an adult, but uh, pushing it onto kids, it's uh, subversion normal. Let's talk about map gang. Let's talk about the maps. Went down the education route just because I, you know, I pushed it there, I guess I shouldn't <laughs> maybe. Let's talk about the map. Let's talk about war, right? Oh, for sure. Me and uh, my lady have been budgeting for half a year now and it's been the best thing i've ever done awesome jalan awesome awesome i never cared about the woke available mob but when it started to get more and more forced it became 10 times worse in my perspective agreed agreed joe chicho i remember a story in a new york state a couple of years ago they had an advanced math program that had hardly any african-american students yeah they ended it enrolled so instead of trying to solve the problem the government just canceled the entire program so nobody can get advanced math classes yeah they're shooting for the lowest common denominator because you don't need intelligent people to go to war to die for wall street right for corporations you need people who obey your orders that's all you need you don't need geniuses to do whatever you want them to do it, the centralized power right you don't want free thinking individuals that question authority that's not what centralized power wants centralized power wants exactly what the imperialists did in africa right take a small group take a small minority Give it a shitload of power, funds, military support, propaganda. Give it all the tools it needs to subjugate everybody else. What do people think is going on right now in the Western world? They've taken a minority group, right? Not all, not all, right? They've taken fanatics, given them all the tools they can to subjugate everybody else to stomp on everybody else anybody that doesn't appreciate human rights individuality free speech as far as i'm concerned can go fuck themselves right that's my personal opinion okay that's what it is right Are the blue stickers countries without war? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The blues are peace. Do we have any other peace? Denmark, Greenland is part of Denmark, right? So Greenland, unfortunately, it's money, taxes, and Denmark has supported Ukraine. So that's also orange as well. We should put orange there as well. We should put orange there as well. Uh, availability. I also think the dumbing down of the population has a lot to do with AI. I wouldn't call it AI. It's just program. It's just uh, AI. Maybe the power uh, that be are aware that AI will wipe out a lot of jobs. Oh, I gotta allow this. Uh, a lot of jobs, so they just need oh, a lot. Point. Need, uh, need uh, just need subservient low IQ 
to do uh, live. Yeah, you can't use the R word on Twitch. <laughs> we gotta say low IQ. We gotta say low IQ. Greenland is Denmark. Doink. Sorry, Greenland. You should be peaceful, but you're not. All right, you should be peaceful, but you're not. Not necessarily politically neutral. Okay, gang. Now let's continue. Let's just stick with the war thing, right? Uh, Joe Chicho, what about Oman, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait? All of them, as far as I see it, they're either orange or yellow, right? Like all of these countries here, United Arab Emirates, uh, Dubai, Qatar, um, even Kuwait has been pretty quiet, right? But I would say they're orange. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Qatar... Qatar, right, was funding ISIS with Saudi Arabia, right, in Iraq, okay, in Syria. Now Qatar has been slowly trying to separate itself from Saudi Arabia, right? They even trash talk the Saudis a little bit, right? Now, what's going on in Qatar? Saudi Arabia is a war with Yemen, right? Qatar started banging heads was Saudi Arabia so I would say United Arab Emirates has been quiet too what's going on there I think we're gonna see some heads roll in there let's put orange on Qatar uh, Abu Dhabi United Arab Emirates mm, maybe we leave that alone for now right maybe we leave that alone for now okay and by the way, let me let me do one other thing that I wanted to do as well. Let's lay out what's really the what's going on with Russia, right? How we came to be where we are. Okay. How we came to be where we are. Let's start the clock into what we're seeing right now from the beginning of the century, 2000, the year 2000. You can really start at 2001, right? Now check this out. Since 2001, this is what we have seen, right? This is what we have seen. Okay. In 2001, we had 9-11, right? And the reaction of the Western world and the coalition, well, it was NATO and whatnot, was to go into Afghanistan. So in 2001, assuming people understand, uh, sure, assuming people understand, 91, to, assuming people, okay, you know what? Let's, true, Cheryl, let's start the clock at the fall of the Berlin Wall, right? The dissolving of the USSR. Okay. No, Cheryl, great point. Let's start it at the fall of the Berlin Wall, dissolving of USSR, right? So no more USSR. All the Soviet... Should we start in uh, 19, uh, 1978? Should we start? Okay. Let's go back to the 1970s. And Soviet... Af okay. Cheryl, let's go back to the 1970s. <laughs> Cheryl's like, no, you got to go back further. <laughs> Uncharted days, Chicho. In your opinion, what country has the best foreign policy? In my opinion, which country has the best foreign policy? I think uh, uh, best foreign policy is probably the ones that don't have a foreign policy. Stay out of everything, right? Stay out of everything. Personally, for me, a country that I have respect for, it has a serious problems. I don't want to live under dictatorship, centralized power, communism, or anything. But one of the countries that has treats other countries with respect in large part is cuba cuba doesn't export weapons cuba exports doctors right so cuba in large part i know i know south america they try to push the 
communism agenda and stuff like this but you have to understand cuba was known as a whorehouse of the americas before the cuban revolution and it was a huge improvement for the cuban people when they kicked out the mafia and the cia from cuba no ifs or buts about it it was basically cuba was basically 100 percent illiterate and after the cuban revolution 10 years later it was almost 15 years later it was almost 100 percent literate right huge difference right we're not going to talk about the goods and bads of cuba in large part but when it comes to what, uh, as, oh, what was the question? Uh, as Uncharted 8 says, which country has the best foreign policy? I think countries should help out other countries by sending doctors and teachers and aid when they can without any strings attached. We're not talking U.S. aid where, oh, we're going to send you food, but you got to buy it from you know, Monsanto crap. Monsanto affiliated or bear now or whoever big agro business okay so to a degree that Iceland wasn't bad until it it did whatever the World Economic Forum wanted to do right could we later in short or long map out the Yemen war or there in my uh, as here in my country, media is nearly, thank you very much for the follow only blitz. Uh, as here in my country, media is nearly never talking about it. A war largely ignored by the international public, I guess, yeah. Uh, Yemen is Obama, Obama's war, right? Uh, mass starvation, lots of kids dying. Uh, they say it's a civil war, but it's not a civil war it's a proxy war okay it was um instigated by saudi arabia and united states brett slinger thank you very much for the sub appreciate it uh how many months 18 months street salut thank you for being here so it's it was obama's war right it's horrendous what happened in yemen and what is happening in yemen is horrendous and by the way yemen kicked the shit out of saudi arabia like literally kicked the shit out of them just like the afghanis kicked the shit out of the soviet union and the united states okay like literally people in sandals and bare feet destroying multi-million dollar weapons western weapons what do you think Russia is going to do with all those weapons? Poof. Annihilation, right? So we could go down and it's crazy. I mean, Obama assassinated two American citizens in Yemen, right? Without drone assassinated. Crazy, crazy. The more we go back, the deeper we understand. The more we go, okay. Let me give you a lowdown. Switzerland, first time, Chad. Hand of malice. Switzerland, bankers' wars. Smedley Butler said it. All wars are bankers' wars. And where is, where is, where is there a lot of bankers? Switzerland. Right? Cheryl, just so much context that is missed or ignored, but so important, so important. Um, okay, let's... Okay. I'm gonna let's start the clock. Uh, Plutonic was Afghanistan, a satellite state of the Soviet Union, and as a proxy war for the U.S. Then ruled by uh, Islamists. Then ruled by U.S. secured government in Kabul and tribes and Islamists uh, everywhere else. After 20 years of Western intervention, back at the yeah. So check this out. Okay, let's go to Afghanistan. Okay. To understand Afghanistan, you gotta understand Brzezinski, and whoever controls Eurasia controls the world right now unical pipeline you got major resources here as much not well, not as much but major resources are a lot of the resources that are available in africa are also available here it's just major conflict zones right so in the 1970s there was more of a communist uh ussr backed government in afghanistan okay and what happened was the United States started funding the 
the opposition party in Afghanistan, and there was a coup attempt in large part in Afghanistan. Okay. Now, what basically happened was the USSR started supporting the Afghan regime there, and it was a regime, okay, there, and they started the United States started basically in large part the western world really started to basically poke a stick in a hornet's nest right because who they were supporting here in the late 1970s and all the way in, into the 80s were the islamists the fanatics al-qaeda if you want to call it al-qaeda was a cia drive war right al-qaeda means base right so basically it was wahhabi sect that had gone from Saudi Arabia, planted their bases, okay, in Afghanistan, set up schools. Schools are ridiculously important, people. Ridiculously important, right? This is how it all begins. That's why the globalists are taking control of our education system, right? That's why we should not be sending our kids to our centralized indoctrination centers. So the Wahhabi sects, that's one thing Saudi Arabia exports a lot of, not just oil, but the Wahhabism, right? The fanaticism. They have schools in all over Africa. One of the first places they started was Afghanistan, right? So they set up their bases there, start training a lot of Islamists. They have mosques, they have schools. United States tag teams with them, starts giving them fucking weapons, right? During the Russian occupation of Afghanistan, right? Russia, it becomes a black hole. Right. Russia loses a lot of people there, loses a lot of military hardware, and it's not going well for them. It's draining USSR's resources, and there's all this other stuff going on, and we're on the verge of the collapse of the Soviet bloc, Soviet Union, right? And this, basically, Afghanistan is the last place empires go to die, right? And USSR went in there, a lot of pressure, they ended up pulling out the government. Now, this is the difference between the USSR, what USSR was doing here, and what the United States did here, right? When USSR pulled out of Afghanistan, they didn't pull out overnight, like the way the Bidens. U United States was in here 20 fucking years, right? USSR was in Afghanistan, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Cheryl, seven years, eight years, five years, six years, somewhere around there, less than 10 years. U USSR was in Afghanistan, right? United States was in Afghanistan 20 years. United States had to pull out overnight, leaving hardware, leaving bases, getting the F out, leaving a lot of their collaborators there to die under the, under the hands of the Taliban, purging going on galore, right? That's how United States left. When the USSR left, nine years, thank you, Joe. U USSR was in Afghanistan nine years, right? When they left, it was organized. They pulled all their hardware out, bases closed down, and the government that they left there was still in power for a number of months, right? So, Joe, uh, USSR was there from December 24th, 1979 to February 15th, 1989. So, 10 years, let's say. 10 years, right? Oh, nine, nine years. Nine years and a couple of months, right? Okay, so they left the government there that was stable for at least a few months, right? And then the Islamists took it over, there was a coup, and we got the beginning of Al-Qaeda, right? We got the beginning of the Islamists, uh, the Mujahideen, right? The Mujahideen, the, yeah, the Mujahideen, right? The, the ones that flew over to Washington, right? All those, the birth of ISIS and stuff like that. They flew over to Washington, met, met with Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. Ronald Reagan compared them to the, to the founding fathers of the United States of America, right? You follow this? This is how close Mujahideen, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and how long their relationship has been together started in Afghanistan, and the United States government called them compared them to the founding fathers of the United States of America. Okay. 
This is 1980s, right? 19, end of 1980s, USSR collapses. They make a deal, USSR, Gorbachev make a deal with the United States, right? Saying, okay, we're not going to militarily occupy any of the Eastern Bloc countries. We're going to pull out. You make a promise that NATO does not move one inch to the east. Doesn't move one inch to the east. Thank you very much for the follow, Rosa. Appreciate it. Okay. So NATO or United States promises Russia that NATO is not going to move one inch to the east. Okay. This is late eight late eighties and USSR pulls you Russia pulls out USSR block collapses. Warsaw Pact is gone, right? Which is the main reason that NATO existed, right? North Atlantic Treaty Organization existed to challenge the Warsaw Pact, right? So Russia, USSR collapses. Russia economically just fucking plummets, right? Plummets, right? Bush senior gets into power. Uh, and this is at the same time, this needs to be cleared up as well, right? At the same time, there's Iraq-Iran war happening. One of the most devastating wars in history. One of the most brutal wars in history. One of the most infuriating wars in history. One of the reasons was Europe and the United States, the Western powers, were supplying Saddam Hussein with all the military hardware, with all the information satellites including chemicals chemical weapons that iraq was using on iranians right iranians right in the 1980s right iraq ended up losing that war in large you could say it was a draw but iraq after that war economically was fucking devastated Iran after the Iran, we could get in, seriously, we could talk about that for a long time. I'm skipping over a lot of shit, right? Iran, after that war, was fucking solidified, solid. The morale in Iran was United States, Western governments using Iraq with high-tech U.S. Western weaponry, using chemical weapons that... Iraq denied using, Western governments denied that Iraq was using, and everybody knew that they were using, right? Everybody knew that Iraq was using chemical weapons. Iran after that war, the Iranian population was like this, solid. Now, at the same time, there was purges going on in Iraq where they were getting rid of communists and stuff like this. That was after the Iranian revolution in 1978-79, right? So this war is crucial. Iraq economic turmoil, right? Economic turmoil. Saddam Hussein needed a diversion. At the same time, oil prices were plummeted, right? Kuwait was doing slant oil drilling into Iraq, Iraqi reserves and dumping oil onto the markets, suppressing oil prices, right? Suppressing oil prices, okay? Going against what OPEC was saying. Okay. Iraq told... The Kuwaiti installed puppets there. Stop doing this because Iraq needs money to build back its economy, right? Because they just spent a shitload of money. Where did they spend it? They buy weapons from the United States and Western countries. So Iraq took all their oil profits, all the oil money, and they bought weapons from the Western governments, right? We're war-based economies. Western world is a war-based economy, especially the United States of America, right? And they needed oil prices to be fairly high for them to be able to stabilize the country again. Kuwait was going against that. Iraq met up with the Americans because Iraq, Saddam Hussein, was a CIA-installed puppet. They put him in power in 1960 with a coup, right? And Iraq dropped a hint that they might go into Kuwait to prevent them from flooding the market with oil. United States said, do whatever you want. Iraq took that as the green light for them to go into Kuwait. They went into Kuwait, oh, the shit at the fan. United States, Europe, oh, Iraq is invading Kuwait, blah, 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 right? We make a coalition of the willing at the time. No, a coalition of the willing they called in the, the second Gulf War, but basically under George Bush, right? They started the first Iraq War 
absolutely disgusting absolutely disgusting the propaganda in that war was insane right incubator babies just look that up and you'll see how ridiculous it was right by the way gang uh, uh, here here in my country we only heard in the media that Saddam Hussein is an evil dictator who without any reason attack yeah that's what they say and without any support he was an evil dictator Saddam Hussein indeed he was whose puppet was he he was Western puppet he was Western trained Western installed puppet so the puppet was the puppet the true evil of what was happening or the people controlling the strings of the puppet right we, yeah, we have to consider that right that was a guard by the way when the first gulf war happened okay the people that felt them seriously in the world the people who felt aside from iraqis the people who felt the most amount of pain for iraqis were iranians because they knew exactly what was going on i talk with iranians even though for eight years there was an iraq iran war happening that iraqis saddam hussein used chemical weapons on iranians killed iranians this region here south of iraq they have the same religion as iranians they're the same people the people in iraq that were fighting iranians during the 1980s right they didn't want to fight iran they were forced to fight iran they had no choice in it they were cannon fodder right very much the same shit that's happening in ukraine right now by the way okay with the ukrainian regime grabbing people off the streets and sending them to the front lines cannon fodder right so iranians i'm talking iranians in canada i was talking to right we all because i, I, I was born not, i was born there i lived there i lived very close to the iraq iran border right when i was a kid no one wanted to see that many iraqis die and that to happen to them no one no iranian meanwhile the western world was cheering the shit on right that's the level of empathy that the 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 difference you see in the world from one part of the world to another part of the world okay unbelievable so iraq war happens what happens the united states the coalition of willing or the western allies set up a military base in the holiest site the holiest country land for a certain segment of the muslim world the people in afghanistan freak the fuck out the wahhabi sex right because why the fuck are western military setting up military western government setting up a military base in saudi arabia to wage war on muslims right so they go in there they fucking chill look 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 at the highway of death okay look at the highway of, if you if you want to know what the first Gulf War was about two things you need to look up Incu incubator babies and look up the highway of death okay and then compare it to what Russia's doing in Ukraine okay and that should reveal to you enlighten you as to what really is going on and how much propaganda the Western world is uh, under right and how brainwashed most people are in the western world right so united states and the rest of allies go in there and they don't remove saddam hussein because they realize they can't occupy the whole country right they have hundreds of thousands of troops here by the way in saudi arabia and shit like this they go in there liberate kuwait how do they liberate kuwait they tell the kuwaiti royalty that hell we'll put you back in power but most of your wealth is not ours kuwaiti's the royalty there they go well fuck, we got nothing right now might as well give give whatever we got to the western powers to stay to get our little piece of chunk of control back right and for 10 years right so iraq war number one 1991 during the clinton administration you see balkanization here yugoslavia breaks down nato 
fucking wages war in Europe again with Yugoslavia, destroying Yugoslavia, fucking the propaganda coming on the war they needed to wage and Serbia was unbelievable. You know, NATO bombs uh, Chinese television stations in Serbia and Yugoslavia because they don't need crazy shit going on. So since the collapse of the USSR in the late 1980s, what basically happened was when Russia collapsed economically and during that time in the 1990s, Russia like literally economically completely collapsed annihilated right i've mentioned this before people were selling their underwear in the streets because they needed to buy food people in the eastern Bloc countries under the ussr were cutting down telephone poles because they needed wood to heat their homes in the winter right they were burning everything and anything to heat themselves in the winter right well uh plutonic says why was serbia targeted yugoslavia was targeted because it was the balkanization of the region to on their way to wage war on russia right they need to divide everyone break people up into dif different ethnic groups that way they can control them same kind of shit they did in africa right so it was basically nato wanting to move east even though they promised ussr they wouldn't move east right so in the 1990s russia had completely collapsed uh it, it was a joke we had people from United States, from Washington, uh, from New York. I know this because I, we had family member that used to travel to Russia a lot, right? And he said one time, it was in uh, Los Angeles at the time, and he told a story where he was at the Moscow airport and a private jet landed in a Moscow airport. And this guy was a merchant, right? This guy was a merchant and he knew his shit. He traveled all around the world, did a lot of dealings and stuff like this. He said he was... He was in the Moscow airport and a private jet landed on the tarmac and a whole shitload of Anaskazi uh, Jews, the, the ones with the hair like this, got out of the plane, right? And they went into Moscow. He knows this because they had a lot of connections. What they ended up doing was they went to the Moscow Museum. They walked around and they said they want that piece, that piece, that piece, that piece, that piece. So Russia was being looted like literally looted just the way any empire goes into any country and loots artifacts from that region for example a lot of countries in africa and the middle east have disputes with london right now museums in london wanting their artifacts back right so in the 1990s a lot of people from the western world were going into Mos uh, into russia and looting the nation right so not only just art like priceless art they were they were paying like chump change like a few thousand dollars to buy this priceless piece of painting or any type of art that would be worth millions in the western world if they could get it out right crazy they were also doing this to companies like oil companies mining companies industrial companies factories right they destroyed the economy factories were closing down bare bones they were going in there and buying these factories and the rights for regions to extract resources just the way we talked about sierra leone that the mining company in canada and uk that in the last stream that we did they were getting all these resources for chump chain pennies on the dollar that gave rise to russian oligarchs so russia in the 1990s turned into a complete oligarchy with the general population impoverished alcoholism through the roof drug addiction through the roof remember afghanistan produces 80 90 percent of the world's opium heroin flooding into russia flooding into russia right annihilated okay at the end of the 1990s 2000 who comes into play putin putin comes into play right i'm just going to read a couple of uh things a divide and conquer i'm just going to really scan this really quick uh da, 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 just see if i missed anything important cheryl even though i have a hard time not referring to the region as yugoslavia it's weird to hear someone else say it yeah yeah uh, 99 russia wasn't ready to fence her no in 1999 russia couldn't do anything russia was co completely collapsed military was in shambles economy was in shambles food stocks were in shambles could uh industry was was 
completely destroyed. It was it was very difficult to even extract oil resources out of there, right? But it created the oligarchs, right? What happens at the end of that in 2000? Putin comes into play. Putin comes in and he's a nationalist. He believes in Russian identity, right? And he builds back the country. How long does it take him to build back the country? Well, you could say it took Putin, okay, and the people that really gave a shit about Russia 20 years to build back Russia. Because when Putin comes into power, since the beginning of the century, and this is where we began, Cheryl, since you kicked us back into the 1970s, right? And I glossed over a shitload of stuff, right? In 2000, right? At the beginning of, two, in 2000, basically, 2000, 2001, Putin comes into play. No one knows who he is, but he's a Russian. He believes in the Russian identity, right? In 2001, we get 9-11. In 2001, we get Western governments going into Afghanistan and Patriot Act being passed. Patriot Act to me was the trigger that really laid out everything else that we are right now. Right? They go into Afghanistan. Dumbest fucking move the Western governments have ever made. Afghanistan is the empire killer. Right? It's the empire killer. They go in there. In 2001, they go into Afghanistan. They occupy Afghanistan. They put their own puppet in power. The person they put into power was working for Unicalf with pipelines going up here. They wanted to build the pipelines, build a connection. They thought they had it all, all the resources. And Afghanistan has a shitload of resources. Lithium, I've heard a lot of it, right? And other things, right? And you got Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, uh, Kazakhstan, and all this jazz, right? I know these places have resources because when I was doing geophysics in the 1990s, we had one of our geophysics members doing geophysics work here for the resources, right? Okay. Now, they get into Afghanistan. They think they got it all sorted out. Bush Jr., a little puppet, Dick Cheney calling the shots, okay? Afghanistan was a prize they got, right? Or they thought they got. But they also weren't done in Iraq. They want Iraq as well, right? So Bush Jr. in 2003, they build up the case, yellow cake and shit coming out of Sudan. By They put Colin Powell, the UN, flipping his, said anybody that knew anything knew that iraq was not building weapons of mass destruction one of the reasons you knew this because if you were following scott ritter scott ritter was a weapons inspector because in the 1990s i glossed over this in the 1990s 10 years of sanctions 12 years of sanctions on iraq devastated iraq they couldn't even get pencils into the country because under the umbrella of sanctions we can't give iraq anything that they can't build can't, they can't build any weapons of mass destruction the lead inside pencils was sanctioned so they couldn't even get pencils into iraq right medicine into iraq okay you had madeleine albright being asked right if madeleine albright you united states being asked that if she thought, thank you very much for the follow, Biggie. Uh, if she thought, because during those times, the sanctions in 1990s, half a million Iraqi children died because they couldn't get medical attention. And they asked Madeleine Albright on 60 minutes of all places if she thought the price was worth it. And she said, yeah, we thought the part, we think the price is worth it. That half a million children in Iraq should die because they can't get any medicine because of the sanctions and the constant bombings. You got it? Compare that to what's going on in Ukraine, right? Just keep that in mind. Now, Bush Jr., Cheney regime, they decide to go into Iraq, build another coalition of the well, the coalition of the willing is 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 in Iraq War II, right? Put the military base in Saudi Arabia, again, coming in there, going into Iraq hardcore, occupy Iraq, put their whatever, puppets in power, dismantle the military. Some of the worst, Wolfowitz was one of the people that did this too. One of the worst decisions, military operations in human history, the way it was conducted in Iraq. Basically, it gave all of southern Iraq to Iran because Iran has 
really influence in Iran. So what the United States did there made Iran even that much more powerful, right? United States didn't pull overnight out of Iraq because they're still there. So you, United States is still there. War waging under Bush Cheney regime for the early to for the early to mid to late two thousands, right? And then Obama comes into play, right? So this is what we got so far: two thousand and one Afghanistan, two thousand and three Iraq, right? You have pressure being put on Syria now. Lebanon is being pressured, right? And then you have so-called so the uh, peace presidents coming in. Peace president coming in, Obama. You got a peace Pulitzer Prize, whatever the hell it's called, right? The clown show, the clown piece of paper they hand these people, Obama. Obama comes into power. People think the, the anti-war movement goes away, right? In, in, in Canada, the United States, they go away. Why did they go away? I think because a lot of the anti-war movement were racist because they thought a black person coming into power in the United States was going to be peaceful, right? Obama comes in, wages war on Syria. Watch this. Escalates in Afghanistan. Escalation. Boom. More military, more hardware, more soldiers in Afghanistan. Escalates in Iraq starts a war in Syria, starts a war in Yemen, bombs the living daylights out of Syria, and continues military oper operations in Somalia, supports the coup in Ukraine. This is Obama. People think Bush and Cheney were bad. Obama was 10 times worse. Bush and Cheney, Afghanistan and Iraq, Obama, Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, Somalia, Libya, Ukraine. Got it? Got it? Okay. Throughout all this time, NATO was moving east. Throughout all this time, Putin is in power. Okay. One of the main catalysts that made Russia realize what was going on is what happened in Libya. In the UN, the Western countries wanted to put a no-fly zone over Libya. And USSR was resisting as best as they could, but they couldn't resist any more than that. And then the Russian representative of the UN, I believe, walked out of the UN meeting. The Western world put no-fly zone over Libya, and they took that right no-fly zone over Libya because protecting people from innocent civilians from taking viagra look into that shit it'll make you vomit the propaganda it's unbelievable right and they gave they took that as no fly zone as a green lit to annihilate libya and they annihilated libya now look into libya history of libya how much it had before the annihilation of libya obama and what it has now it'll make you want to vomit okay nato continues to move east Russia under Putin is waging war on the oligarchs. Oligarchs start leaving. He arrests some of them, seizes their assets. Oligarchs, the people who made their money from selling Russia's history, Russia's resources, Russia's people to the Western world. That's how a lot of these oligarchs made their money in the 1990s. Russia eliminates the oligarchs that made their wealth billions on the backs of the Russian people, right? Putin continues to build stronger military, stronger financial system, consolidates more power, eliminates the oligarchs, okay? Starts making allegiances around the world, okay? Starts knowing that resources are really the backbone of an economy, starts building up the resources, starts giving people land to come farm in Russia. At the same time, you got South Africa collapsing, right? The end of apartheid happened in the 1990s, I believe, right? End of apartheid happens, right? 
South Africa is as a as a pale reflect well it it's in trouble right a lot of farmers some farmers in South Africa are given land in Russia to go to Russia and farm for free we we'll give you land if you can come and farm Russia solidifies Russia makes it more powerful because it knows NATO was coming for it and there's no way they're going to go back to the 90s right Russia could not defend do anything about what happened in Ukraine in the 2014 coup when NATO uh, got rid of a democratically elected government okay and installed uh, historically Russia's enemy in there right and we talked about what took place there when they said they tried to commit genocide and Russian speaking Ukrainians it was a civil war that turned into a hot war Russia all this time built connections with China built connections with India extremely important with South America with Brazil they came up with bricks economically we're right now okay in 2022 we saw that the Russian currency is now considered in large part to be a reserve currency because you can buy Russian resources by using rubles instead of US dollars. Okay. Under Trump, no additional wars. Quiet. Quiet under Trump. Right? Really. There are sanctions, right? There's sanctions. Trump does some stupid shit. Giving away Golan Heights to Israel. It's not there. Giving away parts of here. Oh yeah, Morocco. Morocco is uh is a civil war as well right in morocco and different places what happens when the biden administration comes in what happens when the biden administration comes in uh their looting of ukraine continues because under obama they were looting ukraine the same way they did to russia in the 1990s okay the western governments the western powers they were doing to ukraine but they were using ukraine as a as a laundering money center Morocco, um, Morocco is a civil war here with South Sahara. Uh, what's that country called? Anyway, what's that region called? Okay. And where we are right now is this, if we're lucky, will remain this and will not expand. But I think it's going to expand. That's uh, the quick history, Speedy Gonzalez style, without having to look things up and uh, uh, and look up everything I said. I might have my dates a little bit wrong. I might have different coalitions <laughs> wrong. Coalition of the Willing was Iraq War Two, I believe, not Iraq War One. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. Okay. Aside from that, what else should we add on this map? I haven't caught up with the chat. What's up? Ask, do you have some good remedies that help with okay du, 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 du. Bob Hope you keep on posting the same thing oh no we got a spammer going on here okay Bob Hope I'm gonna time you out let's see if we can do it can we time you out Doing. oh man lots of western sahara it's uh what's it called yeah western sahara i think it's the conflict here the tart i forget the name i'm sorry i'm bad with names first time chat larissa where are you from i'm in canada i'm in canada okay i'm in canada I'm all the way down to the chat gang. If there's anything I was I missed directed towards me, please let me know. Elder God Chicho, I need some more blue on the map, please. Let's find out blue. Where are the peaceful places, gang? Seriously. What's going on in Antarctica? Good question. We don't know. Dizzy Moth. Meritaria. Isn't Merit No no no, not Meritaria. There's an isn't Meritaria? So Southern Meritaria? I looked into this a few years ago when it was going on. And uh, my accent identifier is way up. Okay, gang, where do we got blue? Let's put a blue somewhere. Let's put blue. We need blue. We need blue. 
is said uh, to be occupied and it was a former Spanish colony. Yeah, okay. I say let's invade North Central Islands. Net no, Netherlands is not blue. Netherlands is fucking war zone. It's orange. Netherlands is orange. Netherlands is saying they're going to send fighter jets to Ukraine. Okay. No, Switzerland is orange. Switzerland is orange, perps. Meritatious is a... Uh, Marat, 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 Chile maybe? Chile is uh, to a certain degree civil war. Peru, uh, Paraguay, Paraguay, and Uruguay. As far as I know, they're blue. Chile, there's major issues there in Chile. Paraguay and Uruguay, blue for sure. No, Egypt's, I think, uh, to a certain degree, civil war. I wouldn't, uh, Egypt could turn into a hot war, quite like full on civil war, quite rapidly. Yeah, Antarctica is a, is a what do you call it? Uh, military f free, uh, free zone, but I wouldn't, uh, we really don't know what's going on in Antarctica. We could put a blue in Antarctica, but I wouldn't want to live in Antarctica. Uh, so, Singapore? Singapore. Let's get some blues going on. That's a good. We'll put, you know what, if you want, let's put blue in Antarctica. That's on Ant Antarctica up there. Okay. Let's put blue in Antarctica. Where else? Well, where else? We need blues. You're right. Oh, my God. Bangladesh, Singapore, Singapore, Indonesia, certain parts of civil war. Yeah, that's our chart. Oh, I gotta time out this Bob guy. He keeps on. Oops. Time out. Bob. Bob Hope. Bob Hope, I'm timing you out. Hopefully, you won't be able to post. Boop, 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 boop. Indonesia? Philippines? Papua New Guinea? What about a blue for Australia? No, Australia is a war. Us, well, supporting war anyway. Australia will join any war that. The Europeans get into. No, Australia. We decided that they're they're orange, big time. Yeah, it only shows up for me for some reason. Oh uh, God, you're right. We can be hundred percent certain about whether Antarctica is funding any militaries. Yeah, Bhutan, Bhutan, Bhutan's up here, isn't it? Well, how about here? French Guinea, Suriname, Guyanan, Guyanan. Are these are these as far as we know blue? Uh, Plutocrus Australia had a uh, had long had for a long time its neutrality doctrine, but in more integrated in the collective West. Yeah, Joe Chicho. Apparently, there is a conflict between. Indonesia and the free Papa movement first time I've heard yeah there is Indonesia has, has serious issues uh, in certain parts uh, there's so many islands <laughs> there right oh Bob is still appearing I think it's a bot I'm gonna ban ban Bob hope Hopefully they won't show. We got one of these last time too. Okay, we're, Sri Lanka is civil war, right? Would you say Sri Lanka is civil war? India, what about India? Southern India, peace. Peaceful as far as I know. Northern India could be problematic.
I mean, we should have probably had a color for just collapse. Sri Lanka is definitely civil war. Yeah, Sri Lanka is civil war. I would say India, northern India. Uh, wow. Well, what should we put India as? Blue? Blue? India has always had some kind of conflict going on. Right? But... Pakistan is yellow most stuff. Yeah, Pakistan. Pakistan and India, northern India, I would say yellow. We need more blue. Where is a blue? Jordan, yeah, Jordan could be considered blue, but Jordan has a military base, you major U.S. military base there. So Jordan, if anything, it's uh, it's not a civil war, but it's definitely supporting wars, right? Larissa, Australia, Austria, and NATO officially formally quote corporation corporations began when. Cooperation began when Austria joined the Partnership for Peace, PFP program, in 1995 and the Euro-Atlantic Partnership Council. Uh, multilateral, oops, missed it. Multilateral uh, form for dialogue that brings... Oh my God, that Bob thing was crazy. It still kicked me up. I can't believe it's still deny. Allow deny. I'm gonna deny. Doing. How does how did these bot things? This guy still get through. It's crazy. Taiwan. Taiwan already in there. Taiwan's uh, a yellow. Taiwan's yellow. Countries among Panama. Hmm. Good question. Panama. Costa Rica blue. Costa Rica blue? What did you say, Panama? Costa Rica blue. Central America could see major problem. Like Honduras civil war, right? <laughs> Scotland. Well, yeah, what about Scotland? Uh, Honduras. Honduras Civil War, right? Costa Rica doesn't even have, and have a military. I don't know. Bob acting. Costa Rica, Romania. No, Romania is a puppet state. I mean, look at what they did to Andrew Tate. Red? You would say Romania red? <laughs> I would say Romania. Romania is uh, is orange. I think I would call Romania orange. Bulgaria. I mean Bulgaria orange. Hungary. Uh, Hungary. I would say it's it's not orange yet. It's not civil. Maybe Hungary's blue, right? Bulgaria orange. Okay. Romania. We already put on there, didn't we? Yeah, Romania, we already got as orange. Bulgaria orange. What about Greece? Cyprus, I would say, is still a civil war. Right? Scotland will, uh, will get independent and become blue one day. Hopefully. I hope. Hungary orange. Hungary orange? Okay, Hungary orange. Larissa says, far-right government in Hungary. Well, I wouldn't call them far right. I would call them people that don't want to wage war on Russia and don't want to do everything that the the oligarchs in Brussels say. Right? John, they do not have military. They try to stay out of pretty much everything awesome. Madagascar, Madagascar. Let's do Madagascar blue. Madagascar has some issues, but we'll put it blue because we don't know 
too much about it. Greece? Uh, Greece will do whatever the EU tells it to do. Madagascar blue. For Indonesia, we have to find out where the civil war, the unrest is. Uh, same with Malaysia. Malaysia is blue. Malaysia blue? Yeah. Malaysia blue? Greece and Turkey have some tensions, don't they? Yeah. Greece should be orange. Greece should be orange because it'll do... I think it's decided to send military to Ukraine. Fighting for island states. How the gods like fighting for island states. Hilarious. Hungary tries to keep out of the uh, collective West war. I hope. I hope so too. Uh, this is going to Greece. Greece is orange. Greece will do whatever the EU tells it to do until things change. Right? South Africa. Yeah, what about South Africa? South Africa, civil war. South Africa is a mess. What should we put South Africa? Canada is orange. Canada is sending military. Canadian tanks are already there. They we have four tanks we sent them. <laughs> and other things. Yeah. Malaysia neutral, I think. Malaysia neutral? Malaysia blue? Malaysia blue. Malaysia blue. Malaysia. What the hell? I lost Malaysia. There we go. <laughs> I was like, where's Malaysia? Oh, Thailand. Thailand blue. Thailand blue? Thailand blue for now. Uh, let's see where their ninjas are sent. Thailand? Thailand blue gang? I would say South Africa is borderline red. Yeah, it's yellow, I would say. It's not in war with anybody else. Alberta is blue. <laughs> awesome. Plutonic Pluris. Yeah, Alberta is Saskatchewan. <laughs> don't be distracted by this UFO nonsense. Yeah, don't be distracted by this UFO nonsense. Uh, who are we doing? Blue? I forgot. Uh, blue, blue. Thailand. 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 Bangkok. Thailand. Boink. Thailand blue. For now. Thailand blue for now. Is Thailand under martial law? Thailand is, uh, is... I don't think it's under martial law right now. Is it, Joe? Remember the Battle of Los Angeles. Yoda. What about the country named Chad? Chad. What about Chad? Chad, Chad, right here. I don't know what's going on in Chad right now. See, here's the thing. All the countries surrounding Congo... Uh, we have to look at each one. Angola is civil war. Last time I checked, Angola was a civil war. What about Chad? Is Chad blue? Wait, isn't Japan having a population crisis and on the brink of not being able to maintain social functions? Japan is in trouble, yeah. Japan's orange. Japan's joined the war in Russia. Right? Battle of LA was the name of one of the most important battles in the Mexican American War. Ah, was it? I thought you were talking about the, uh, the riots, Rodney King riots, maybe. I already had breakfast. Philippines? What about the Philippines? What about the Philippines? Philippines, certain parts are like... Pawn, I wish Pawn was here. Philippines, what about Philippines? Are we clear on the Philippines? The Philippines could flip on a dime. Be either a civil war or full-out war. But let's put it blue for now. Blue Philippines. Yeah, do we agree? How about Papua New Guinea? How about Papua New Guinea? That is really strange though, considering there was a huge deposit of lithium discovered in the area recently. I'm sure nothing's up. Where? Lithium was discovered in the Philippines? Or where, uh, Yoda? Wait, what? Japan turned puppets? Oh, yeah, Japan's puppets. Japan has some of the sanctions on Russia, I believe. And they're talking about, and mainly it's because of China, right? Their fear of China. But Japan's, I think, trying to pass, uh, sorry, 
um, yeah, Japan's uh, I think trying to pass legislation where they can start building up their military again. Uh, Japan's going hot, right? Can we all be more like Iceland? Well, I don't want to be like Iceland. They're like ninety-eight percent injected. No, I did, I did. Used to think Iceland was was good, uh, in large part because they sent bankers and two thousand eight financial scam. It's the only Western country I know of that they sent bankers to jail, right? Scammers to jail, right? Timor and Burundi. Burundi. Where's Timor and Burundi? Here somewhere. Where are we? What about these African, Western African countries? Nambia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Civil War, Mozambique, Zambia, Tanzania, Tanzania, Tanzania. An amazing documentary, Darwin's Nightmare about Lake Victoria. If you guys haven't never seen this documentary, watch it. It's frightening. It's called uh, Darwin's Nightmare. Darwin's Nightmare. Yeah, uh, Larissa, we're not going to talk about injections in this stream. I just dropped that because Iceland has the advantage to be an island village. Yeah, and a low population in the fishing village. So sh unless the fish stocks completely... the deplete they should be able to feed themselves western africa tends to be stable yeah to a large part except for sierra leone is there still civil war going on uh senegal cameroon where's cameroon i lost cameroon oh there's cameroon cameroon I talked to some Japanese people on Twitter in Japan. Japanese. They're all for building their military up and kicking American out. Really? Nagushka. John, most of Central Africa is under insurgent control. Yeah. Resources, right? Resources, resources, resources. Right. <laughs> Larissa. <laughs> I got a video out there, right? Uh, about the word you used. It's a it's a slur word, by the way. <laughs> I wouldn't use it, <laughs> right? Look into the data, Larissa. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. I hope you join us one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is our conflict? Finish, dude. Uh, Cheryl, no civil war in Sierra Leone. But it's still struggling. So, yeah, I wouldn't, like, to me, a, a blue should indicate it's a safe place to go to live, right? Is Sierra Leone a safe place to go to live? It's not a war. Wow, that's not our definition. I guess it was supposed to be no war, right? Okay. Should we put blue? Should, do we dare put blue on Sierra Leone? Uh, a Troy. Is this uh, list only for countries that are involved with the Ukraine war or any? No, any, any, any war, right? Uh, so, for example, Qatar didn't, uh, is not involved in Ukraine as far as I know, right? But it is in conflict with Saudi Arabia to a certain degree, right? And it did support ISIS in Iraq. Is it still supporting ISIS covertly? I don't know. Bhutan, Bhutan. Bhutan, we had Bhutan. Hold on. Where is Bhutan? Why am I? I'm drawing a blank. Bhutan, Bhutan. Bhutan is in a Asia. Bhutan, Bhutan. No, Bhutan's up here. There it is, Bhutan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bhutan's peaceful. That's right. Bhutan's peaceful. I just had a friend that came went there. She said it was amazing. Bhutan. Bhutan is peaceful. Bhutan is peaceful. Thank you for that. Uh, who said that, Bhutan? Where did Bhutan person go? Bhutan. Joe, thank you very much, Joe. Yeah, yeah, Bhutan. No blue for Sierra Leone. Yeah, 
Safe to live? For whom? <laughs> For whom? <laughs> Indeed, Cheryl. Yeah, I don't think Sierra Leone can be blue. Next to Nepal. Nepal? Nepal blue? Nepal should be blue. Yeah? Nepal blue. Man, I hope a war doesn't break out with China. If it does, all these countries are going to turn red. Because it's not going to be contained in Taiwan and China and stuff. Like, you know, operations are going to be taking place all over the place here, right? Uh, Sierra Leone is definitely a civil war. I think it would be a civil war. Cheryl, safe for expats or safe for people from the, na uh, from the nation? I don't know. Good question. Is Austria orange? Austria should be orange. Yeah. I think we have... Have we put Austria as orange as well? We haven't yet, but we should. Austria is orange as well. Vienna. I've been to Vienna. Very beautiful. But Austria will do what is told by the rulers in Brussels, right? Norway in their box sport is going, yeah, Norway, Norway, fuck, Norway should be red. According to um, Seymour Hirsch, they, they were involved in blowing up the Nord Stream pipelines, right? Like, it should be red, but let's put Norway as orange as well. Norway orange. Denmark orange. Denmark has sent weapons, haven't they? A platonic polaris. Thank you, by the way, a Troy. Uh, where am I putting this guy? Uh, oh, yeah, Denmark. Boink. Denmark, too, will do whatever the EU tells it to do. Yes, I would say Austria is sufficiently enough integrated with the collective West and NATO partner partnership to be orange. Orange supports war. Thank you for that. Give me a Siggy. You got our our thing which you set up. Cambodia. Mm, good question. What's going on in Cambodia? I don't know. What's going on in Cambodia, gang? What's going on in Cambodia? Vietnam. Vietnam chill vietnam peaceful yeah what's going on in cambodia but uae what about uae peaceful uae peaceful i think uae peaceful too for now i thought you know i say maybe orange but we gotta have one country that's peaceful there and vietnam blue where are we at i lost it there we go Vietnam blue. Now, what about Cambodia? Cambodia blue. Baltic states are orange, yeah. Kazakhstan. I don't know Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan had civil war going on, but it was more a proxy war, right? Kazakhstan was uh, definitely... It's stabilized now. Are they going to go after it again? I don't think they can. Cambodia blue. Some people might say that Kazakhstan is not blue. Right? Uh, Plutonic plurus. Orange are suppliers of weapons, money, etc. And supporters of an ongoing war. Yeah. UAE. UAE, we put Oman. What about Oman? Yeah, nice city, but kind of weird people. How about uh, Oman? Oman blue. Right? Should Bhutan first. It's the home of the archery now. Is it? Okay. So Plutonic Pluris uh, mentioned Bhutan first. Okay, cool. So thanks, Plutonic Pluris. And I think Joe for bringing it back up again. Because I missed it. Well, I read it and I remember it. And then I missed it. Laos. What about Laos? I don't think there's anything going on in Laos. 
Is there anything serious going on in Laos? Is Laos pretty peaceful? Plutonopolis. Kazakhstan was maybe on the brink of revolution or induced regime change, but it's kept in order by Russia, maybe. Yeah, it has been. Is it going to stay? Red is hot war going on right now. Hot war. Like tanks and bombs and stuff blowing up. What's going on with humans? What's going on with humans? Good question. We're under hypnosis. Detroit. Denmark has sent wep weaponry to Ukraine and also sent 1,000 soldiers to the Russian border in Latvia. Oh, stupid idiots. Angola and Cheryl. Angola and Namibia are pretty stable. Angola and Namibia are pretty stable? Okay, cool. We do. Far cry from the time when uh, they were at war with South Africa. Eh? Namibia, Botswana, Angola. Angola, Namibia. I like the blue. Blue is good. Cool. Bahamas. <laughs> Bahamas blue. As far as I know, it's going to be pretty stable. But it is a banker money laundering operation. But let's do Bahamas. I had a chance to go to Bahamas. I had a friend that lived there for a while and I never went. I kicked myself. I should have gone. Laos is peaceful. Laos is peaceful. Let's do Laos. Let's do Laos. Where is Laos? Why am I missing Laos here? Laos, Laos. There it is, Laos. Laos. I like the blue. Good idea, Elder God. We need more blue, 100%. Afghanistan Yemen war Yemen is hot war Afghanistan civil war do we have Indonesia we do have Indonesia but we haven't decided what to do with this certain parts of Indonesia are war certain parts are blue uh, I don't know which parts are war which parts are blue I'm sorry I just have to ask this question how are we Denmark the stupid idiots by supporting Ukraine. How is the Western Europe, all of them supporting you? What the F? Oh. Crazy. Cuba is peace. Involved with Angola. Yeah, once Cuba. Cuba is peaceful. What did we say it was? This was Haiti's civil war. Cuba is peaceful. Cuba is definitely peaceful. One of the safest places to travel in the world, without a doubt. Belize? What about Belize? Are we doing all of the 40 or so countries in the Caribbean? Well, the ones that, like, is there 40? Well, Dominican Republic, St. Lu Luciana, St. Martin. Where's St. Martin? St. Martin's here somewhere. Uh, Puerto Rico. Canada, Barbados. I don't know. Should we just put some blues here? Because they're not a war. It's all blue, isn't it? There is no civil war in any of them. Hooray, mom! <laughs> North of Thailand. Yeah, found it. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Hello, monkey time. Hope you're doing well. Kind of surprised to see Mongolia is blue. They're not involved with China or Russia war. No, they're not, as far as I know. Ireland, Ireland, we put orange because we're supporting USCI operations and they're, they're using the 
military base there and they will do what the EU tells them to do unless they get out right can you do it for Ireland what bugs do you get <laughs> RD BG2 <laughs> you got you got the automod zapped yeah can you please put shits on the UK uh -huh. Ireland in conflict with UK for centuries now isn't it that's what happens when the UK when they try to annihilate commit genocide on the people right <laughs> elder god I want to sleep tonight with enough blues in my dreams <laughs> nice yeah I know we've got to decide where to go if war keeps on going the way it is Ireland would be neutral one of I don't know monkey times I don't know I don't I don't see Ireland being neutral right now Ireland is doing everything that the EU is telling it to do so Ireland is definitely not staying neutral right it's not staying neutral Larissa if there was no support to Ukraine Putin would invade more European countries and probably trigger a NATO war uh, no Larissa N Russia has been trying to avoid this this war this conflict for eight years they signed Minsk one Minsk two and Ukraine signed it Germany signed it France signed it okay they signed it to give partial autonomy to the Russian speaking Ukrainians and Crimea and they nagged on the promise and they came out both Germany France other uh, signatory nations came out and said they were they were they were lying to Russia they were never gonna go for peace here they were just buying time to arm UK Ukraine Western Ukraine so Western Ukraine could commit genocide and Russian-speaking Ukrainians in the East and Crimea right no Putin is barely doesn't even want to go any further west doesn't even want to get Kiev why would Russia continue westward they wouldn't it's just propaganda it's just basically bullshit that the media and the warmongers the neocons are feeding Western population uh, Larissa don't listen to it it's bullshit look into uh, what Western Ukraine has been doing in Eastern Ukraine for the last eight years they killed they were bombing civilian town civil war Western Ukrainians were waging war on Eastern Ukrainians bombing civilian cities they killed 15,000 Ukrainians until Russia stepped in it does not start and end with just Ukraine and as long as NATO does not continue to push eastwards it ends at Ukraine it had a oh, Ukraine it was always going to end at Ukraine it was always going to end at Ukraine Picked up. Monkey time. I understand what you are saying, bro. But the government wouldn't openly join a war against anyone unless someone declared war on Ireland. However, Ireland would 100% be pro Europe and would help out in some way. In World War II, Ireland was very pro. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. That's why we have it uh, on that part. Yeah, Ireland is orange because it's supporting the war. It's not a hot war, but it's supporting the war. Is it going to send military hardware? Most likely. Is it going to send funding? Most likely. Is it going to send uh, trainers, experts? Most likely. Right? Is it going to send foot soldiers? Hope it doesn't go there. Malta. What about Malta? I don't know anything about Malta. These guys up here they're all orange Jamaica what about Jamaica what about Jamaica hmm? Jamaica blue Jamaica blue uh, Victor the gamer uh, Ukraine Western Ukrainian governments the puppets there 
they came out and they said any Russian speaking Ukrainian needs to leave Ukraine. That's genocide. They banned Russian Russian being taught in schools. They banned Russian speaking. Uh, they told Russians to leave Ukraine. They burned in Odessa. In Odessa. They burned Russian speaking Ukrainians alive in a building because they were Russian speaking Ukrainians. They were Russian speaking Ukrainians. They burned them alive. It's like in Canada, if Western Canadians or English speaking Canadians started burning French speaking Canadians alive because they were French speaking, that's genocide. That's genocide. There is no other word for it. That is genocide. When a nation does it, it's genocide. When a government does it, it's genocide. Thanks for clearing that up. I love the content. Ah, oh, my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Chicho, it's a bit rough, isn't it? Lich Thimblawa. Oof, I can't even pronounce that. Lich. How are you doing, Lich? So how is humanity able to solve this? You are showing me all the conflict. You can show me how to breed seed peace. We can breed peace by refusing to push our ideologies on other peoples and other nations, right? Why, why, why is NATO constantly pushing eastward towards Russia, right? Why are they constantly pushing towards Russia? Who's instigating this? right we need to hold our countries our politicians accountable for their crimes against humanity we haven't how do we how do we bring peace by holding war criminals and those who commit crimes against humanity accountable so for example okay the western world when they went into afghanistan they started taking people out of afghanistan innocent people out of afghanistan sending them to black sites all over the world and torturing them right obama obama when he came into power okay he said ha, 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 we tortured some folk let's move on no when you find people that commit war crimes that commit crimes against humanity you must hold them accountable otherwise they will come back and do it again which is what we're seeing right now right that's the first place we have to begin accountability right accountability of what we know so far what's the precursor to that is transparency right what who 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 name one person that we know of that has been trying to bring transparency to the world who is it who is it julian assange right julian assange journalist publisher that is trying to bring transparency into our world and what did we do what did we do united states in collaboration with the uk and sweden and australia crucified him and are crucifying him in the uk right crucifying him in the uk which is why every 15 minutes we have a little pop-up show that says free assange free assange free assange because julian assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital as power to humanity something that we desperately need in our societies why do we need it because we have to see peace we have to bring peace right for more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or countless resources available online that document what is released. He's released information about, Wikileaks has released information about the United States, about Canada, about Russia. Did you know that because of Wikileaks, multiple other organizations have come out and have been leaking information about some of the psychopaths that are running on the world? One of them was Project Vratas. The other one was Panama Papers. What was one of the things that the Panama Papers revealed? Panama Papers that came out, by the way, in Malta, the journalist got assassinated by a car bomb, right? In Malta. 
one of the journalists that worked on the Panama Papers. What was one of the bits of information that the Panama Papers revealed? That Zelensky, the psychopath in charge of Ukraine right now, his net worth back in 2018 was $600 million and he had like 20 or 30 homes around the world. This the piece of shit wearing a green t-shirt and turning to the world and wanting to speak at venues, at events that are music festivals, arts festivals, begging humanity to send them more billions of dollars in weapons to commit genocide in Eastern Ukraine and continue the war that could have been easily stopped, right? That piece of shit, his net worth in 2018 was $600 million and he owned anywhere between 20 to 30 homes around the world. That's transparency. Have we held this piece of shit accountable? Russia's about to. Right? I hope they do. I hope they're able to hold them accountable, the people who have brought war on Russia, on Ukraine, on the Western world, at the beginning stages, really. Not even beginning stages. This is war. This is what you see when you're talking about global warfare, by the way. It's crazy. It's crazy. Larissa. Larissa is Greek. Is it Greek? I am from the UK. Salutations. Uh, monkey time. You are a teacher by any chance. You seem like a wise teacher. I, I teach mathematics. And I share as much information as I can. And whatever I say, take it with a grain of salt and do your own research. But I've done a lot of research. Pro gamer, the definition of genocide is genocide is the inter intentional destruction of a people whole or in part. Yeah. There's like three or four definitions. Ukraine, what Western Ukraine was doing to Eastern Ukraine, defined as genocide. Defined as genocide. Elder God, John Wick, chapter four, will clock in at two half hour, two hours and 49 minutes. Sorry, I got excited. Ah, I'm excited too. I own the John Wick comics that they came out. I bought multiple. I bought all the variant covers for number one. John Wick is a fantastic series. Too bad about the Russian angle, but Victor genocide is killing them as a whole or a big part. Exiling a person group is not just it is genocide. It is ethnically cleansing a region is under the umbrella of genocide. Victor, it is. Look it up. I've looked it up multiple times. Unless they've changed it. The UN has changed it because it's like changing the definition of multiple things, right? It's like the US. Two, uh, two, two consecutive quarters of negative... No, no, it's not a recession. And other words. Chile, Peru, Argentina. Argentina is civil war. Argentina is on the verge of collapse. And we'll see where it goes. Argentina would be a civil war. Okay. Availability. I can't fucking believe Azov got officially taken off the extremist list. Thank you very much for the bits. Twitch. Twitching Jason. Twitching Jason. How you doing? Uh, so available says I can't fucking believe Azov got officially taken off the extremist list and officially integrated into the Ukraine army. These are the same neo-Nazi fucks who were fucking with rights, uh, right sector and he uh, heavily Russo uh, and it's heavily Russophobe. Yeah, they, the atrocities they committed. Wow, some of the stuff that I read, what Ukraine did for war in World War Two. The Ukrainian Nazis did in World War II? Wow, it's compatible to what the Japanese were doing uh, when they were they had occupied China. And what's that place called? Whoa, horrendous, horrendous. Lich. So you want to say I have to construct a mightier ideology in order to forget another ideology? I don't know. Uh, Elgar, Russia's main antagonist has always been one country. Look to them for the truth. Larissa, I don't think that will make peace. It would just create more war. No, Lar Larissa, we have to do transparency if that's what we're talking about. Edward Snowden as well, indeed. 
Oh, I'm going to allow that availability. The auto mod zaps it. Maybe that's why I'm seeing appear multiple times. Da, 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 da. Twitching Jason. Da, 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 da. Oh, hold on. Oh my god. Three hour John Wick. <laughs> Twitching Jason. Oh my god. Three hour John Wick. Awesome. Remember to also use your brain, as I say uh, to our kids, young adults at work. Finish, dude. Yeah. Yeah. The pro gamer, the Oxford Dictionary, the Oxford Dictionary says that genocide is, is, um, what is it? Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Oh, where'd it go? Crap. I got knocked up again. Ah. Oxford Dictionary says the murder of a large group of people from a particular na nation or ethnic group with the aim of destroying the nation or group. Go beyond that single definition from the, from Oxford Dictionary. And I think Oxford Dictionary will have multiple layers of it right it's like there isn't just one definition absolute definition of certain words right it could be applied in multiple places ethnic cleansing you could throw it in there right and they were and they were killing western ukraine were killing eastern ukrainians they're, they're still bombing civilian centers right uh larissa how do you do fair research seeing as the internet is geared towards intentionalizing uh internalizing us into an echo chamber only allowing us to see information that suits our own thoughts and ideologies i do multiple sources first of all don't use google for any searches right unless you're doing your google maps you're trying to get somewhere that's fine if you're looking for a movie trailer you can go to youtube right if you want to do research serious research into any geopolitical event any historical event stuff you got to use uh search engines that aren't centralized controlled right so forget google forget youtube right youtube has been purging shitload of videos on everything right uh use brave use start page for your searches don't just get stuff that are sound bites right anything that government media says don't believe it no no way no how you got to do your own research look at look at the propaganda used to start every to justify all the other wars and assume they're doing the same thing right now but more right incubators in iraq right for gulf war one yellow cake in iraq for gulf war two right libya viagra soldiers are popping viagra and doing whatever for to annihilate libya right yemen iran is supporting iran is creating chaos saudi arabia starts worrying yemen right where else oh ukraine is fighting for freedom and justice really really all those people in the western world that are pushing the lgbtq agenda i dare you i dare you for you guys to go down kiev go there bring out your pride flag put on your uh purple triangle dress up the way you do right and i've been to pride parades i published i published the first superhero gay comic book series continuing series comic book right I know that I've been to I praise. I have many gay friends, many many lesbian friends that I party with all nighters. I'm having an awesome time, right? I fucking dare you to dress up the way you do, the way I've partied with you in Vancouver. I dare you to go to Ukraine and Kiev and walk down the street and say pride parade. I dare you. You're right. I dare you. Right? look into the excuses they use to wage war and realize that they're lying to you okay realize that they're lying to you twitching jason just lurking oh man i'm going all the way down gang now this i think what happens with this auto mod as soon as it automatically deny something it keeps on popping it up for some reason it keeps on yeah that sucks oh i gotta go all the way down to the bottom what the f okay i gotta grab this thing
Okay, I'm all the way down to the bottom. Whew. How are we doing for time? What's our uptime? We started late. Oops. That's not how you do it. <laughs> I don't know how long we've been going. Okay, that's an un command. Uh, Joe Chicho, Bolivia, Uruguay, Paraguay, Ecuador, I... Guyana, Cyana. Okay, Bolivia. Bolivia is peaceful. It wasn't chaos, civil war. Kick to death in Kiev. And there are actually Nazis in Ukraine. Yeah. Bolivia, peace. Venezuela, we got as uh, civil, civil war, and it is. Bolivia, peaceful. I've been doing that bang for two hours and 40, 14 minutes. Two hours, 14 minutes. Okay. So we're going to call it quits soon. Uh, Pluton, where Russian people are said to be not so badly informed. There's propaganda too, but still valid information. And Russia has a lot of historic experience. Yeah. Where do you have the facts about the killing of Eastern Ukrainians people? You sound pro Russia. Uh, Eastern Ukraine, it's man. Look into. Uh, look up Scott Ritter. Scott Ritter talks about it. Uh, look up the Duran here. The Duran. Check. Follow their work. Okay. Seriously. The Duran doer search. Follow their work on Rumble. They're on BitChute. They're on SensorTube as well. Uh, check out their work and you'll get a good feel. You might have, it might take you a while. But like uh, Pro Gamer, that's a fact. No one denies that right it's just it's just not being covered on cbc nbc fox and all this stuff but russian ukrainians since the 2014 coup that was that overthrew a democratically elected government that was installed by nato by western powers especially U, uh, united states right with john mccain going there handing out cookies with uh newland and stuff like this right they put in the nazis in power right and as soon as they got in, they basically said Ukraine is no longer a bilingual country. Russian is no longer going to be taught, right? The Eastern Ukrainians said, hey, what the hell? What the fuck's going on? And then uh, Crimea went for uh, independence. Donbass region wanted autonomy. The whole thing started, the shit hitting the fan. NATO was arming Ukraine, and they started killing off Russian-speaking Ukrainians like it, it's a fact like it's not it's not anything that anyone uh is not is, is denying <laughs> victor russia is the one bombing civilians on a day on a daily not even targeting military sites just straight out of part no okay western ukraine was bombing the donbass region since 2014-15 are we writing that off we're saying no it didn't happen everything started on february 24th 2022 is that what we're saying so we're saying fuck the last eight years of western backed western ukraine nato backed regime killing russian-speaking ukrainians we're gonna we're gonna say no they didn't burn russian-speaking ukrainians alive in odessa we're gonna start the clock on february 24th 2022 because putin bad that's that's the fucking level of intelligence we have yikes yikes fantasia kingdom thank you very much for the follow what's the legend for the color tag the legend someone post the legend please red hot war bombs explosions going off orange supporting war either financially militarily soldiers equipment yellow civil war blue we can go to safe live and hopefully the war won't go there okay plutonic plurus one can be pro-russian or pro-ukrainian government and still acknowledge context that aren't in line with your ideals yeah i once this thing's over i have a feeling a lot of western 
the the psychopaths that have been waging this war uh, are are going to be hunted down in Ukraine. They destroyed Ukraine. I have Ukrainian friends. They're like Ukrainians aren't stupid. They know what's going on, right? Alagon, my brother was attacked from behind in Kiev, robbed and left on the streets. Oh, he now lives in Romania. Mugging can happen anywhere, though. Availability, that's such a misdirection of what actually happened. Russia. Red, here we go. Dizzy moth. So red, act of war. Orange, supports war. Yellow, civil war. Blue, peace. Yeah. The mass formation psychosis is strong. <laughs> Probably the Durant as a as a questionable source based on far right wing basis. The Durant far right wing <laughs> promotion of Russian propaganda. Right wing. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? Okay, read the Scott Ritter, an American, American, American weapons inspector. Scott Ritter. Here, read Scott Ritter. <laughs> you don't want Durant right wing. <laughs> Oh my God, Scott Ritter! Look up Scott Ritter. Uh, th there's so much resources. Maybe I need to make another video talking about uh, the resources I use uh, to do research. Uh, look up uh, uh, the gray zone. The gray zone, like <laughs> the gray gray zone. Like there, there's so much resources out there. Like. Stop first order of business. Stop watching CNN, BBC, CBS. Stop reading The Guardian, The Independent. Stop consuming Western corporate propaganda. You're being brainwashed. And if you're only getting your news from links you find on Facebook, you're an idiot <laughs> because that that shit is censored, right? They 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 delete it before you even see it. Before like they don't they don't even send it out, right? first time chat oh we missed something where to go first time chat even osce reports admits majority casualties was on separate sides civilians i mean yeah puerto rico i think we put puerto rico blue didn't we dominican republic what about dominican republic where's puerto rico what the hell i lost puerto rico for some reason my mind going mush. Maybe we we'll continue this next week. We continue next week, gang. Should we do more? Should we do more map? Should we talk more about the map? Because we're going to call the stream soon. Funny how two different gamer that people started chatting at the same time with the same talking points to start starting sentences with capital letters just a coincidence Nagushka. just a coincidence there's nothing remotely extremist neither left or right nor global globalist etc but yeah it's crazy calling the Duran right wing that's gonna be one of the funniest shit i've heard <laughs> hilarious <laughs> too funny Too funny. Adraman Madas Chicho, consider consider checking out the Palestine. Oh, dude, I've been linking it up. I've checked it out. Holy fuck! Wow, wow. Dude, I've been linking it up on our Gilded server. Uh, what I'm finding, some of the stuff. So go to our Gilded server. I've been linking it up in news, I think, and other people have been too. The maps, dude, it looked like a nuclear explode. And man. The rail company offered $25,000 for the town as compensation. $25,000? That company is worth $55 billion. Stock has gone up very high in the last 10 years, right? Very high. I looked at it because my family might be thinking about shorting the shit out of it if there is any accountability in the system, right? They offered $25,000 for the, for the town to clean up the, clean up the mess or compensation for problems, right? There are people reporting that in their house, there's residue, this residue all over their house. They can't even live there. This is toxic residue, fish dying. In, in the, this is a natural disaster on the same level, as far as I see it, same level 
okay maybe not as as it could be we don't know yet as the same level as the india um which chemical plant was it where the train derailment derailed and went into the factory and blew up and killed like tens of thousands of people the the ill effects of this is going to be all uh, we don't know we don't know it's crazy it's crazy right gang Adramadas Hollywood just finished filming a movie in the same place as the train derailment uh, look up the new uh, trailer called what yeah 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 uh, the movie is already out white noise it depicts almost the same event that happened madness yeah the movie was already out uh, Adramas it came out like two two years ago two three years ago four something like that I think it cost like a hundred. I, I looked at the thing. It cost a hundred million to make. It was a Netflix movie, I think. I looked at the trailer. It looks like shit. All the people there are annoying as fuck, right? <laughs> like, uh, but it supposedly only had thirty-five thousand dollars at box office because it was Netflix. So I guess it wasn't released in the theaters or something, right? Uh, I'm scrolling as fast as I can to the bottom, gang, because we gotta call the stream. Let's check it out. Where are we at? Where are we at? I'm at the bottom. I'm at the bottom. Everybody forgets Timor last and Bruni in East Asia. I know. Where is Timor? I'm gonna keep on looking at this map when we find other areas. Timor is down here somewhere. Mariana Islands. Fiji. Fiji is peaceful. Fiji. Let's, before we end it, let's put a little blue thing. Uh, a Troy cooking when? Um, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Fiji. Fiji Islands. Can you guys even see that? Yeah, it's there. Nice. Let's go to Fiji. Southeast Indonesia. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, that's a civil war. That's where the civil war is. Timor, right? Should we mock that off a yellow civil war? Yeah. Yeah, woke America some is stealing water, Fiji water. I've heard it's got good water. Might as well give it to the uh, to the bottling companies, right? Timor, civil war? Are we adding this? Should I add this? Civil war? Timor? East Timor? Civil war? We need confirmation on this. I can't go go out and call everything civil war. We gotta make sure. I don't think it's a civil war anymore. It's not a civil war anymore? Okay, I'm keeping it down. No civil war. Let's turn all yellow tag in into blue. <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> Hopefully one day. Yes, kind of independent sovereignty war maybe. Whole companies are called. Yeah, whole companies are called. They're not a call. They're just using people who are low IQ people to make money. Gang, let's call the stream. Let's call the stream. Apologies about the late start today. Um, had technical difficulties. No, take take time. Map needs to be correct. Yeah, yeah, we take time. We'll we'll look into it. Uh, the pro gamer, I know you see my messages, but neglect to read them. I I don't know. I scrolled all the way down, man. Well, what did what did you say? I am not going to trust a guy named Scott Ritter who is charged. Oh God, get serious. First of all, he's in dispute with, for that, and he's winning it. He's one of the people that won the court case right and when did he get charged with this stuff it's the same shit that they charged julian assange with right <gasps> june you can't trust i've had woke ass low iq people come up to me oh, julian assange was charged with rape no you you law <laughs> you sweden the uk united states with australia are trying to crucify a guy that was releasing information trying to prevent war right and what he was charged with was because he didn't use a condom properly are you a dude have you ever used a condom did you use it properly all the time are you 
Did you did did you use it properly? Did it fall off you every now and then? Did it? No, did it? No. You rape you? Did you do that? You piece of you need to go to UK and be tortured up your ying. I can't low IQ low IQ joke joke you know what happens is centralized power when someone has a voice and they try to prevent their wars they charge them with shit right Scott Ritter was the loudest voice trying to provide uh, prevent Iraq war two from happening right from a million people being massacred millions of people being turned into refugees from this whole area blown sky high you low iq fucking dumbasses dumbasses gang thank you for being here we're on patreon substack subscribe star you can follow the work there for those of you that are supporting this work on those platforms as well as twitch thank you for being here it is in large part because of your support that we're able to do what it is that we are doing and i thank you from the bottom of my heart and mods 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 again thank you for having our backs and being here salute to the mods gang we do announce these live streams 30 minutes 45 minutes before we go live on twitter minds vk gap getter and parlor you can follow the work there for live streams when we don't have any visuals we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast and those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify itunes google play amazon and whatever you follow okay we will be uploading this live stream to sensor tube to bit shoot to rumble and to odyssey we'll see what happens when we load it onto sensor tube part one is doing whatever it's doing and this is part two and we do have a gilded server you're definitely welcome to join us on gilded and follow uh our work there share information get into discussions okay learn and teach that's the best way to be gang i'm going to keep this up we continue this discussion uh we'll do another live stream next week most likely most likely possibly saturday morning but we'll see we might do a live stream friday night as well but we'll see maybe do again next monday but we'll see i'll figure it out talk with my partner see when i can fit in these live streams one thing i want to do is i want to do a music live stream and i want to thank you very much for the follow envy uh nv1 appreciate it and honk honk one thing I'd like to do is do another music, music lyrics live stream where we're just reading war lyrics. I came across uh, 99 Red Balloons the other day and I shared it with my Gilded server. And that's a war song, right? Or talking about war. So I like to do that as well. We'll see if we can fit it in next week. Aside from that, gang, I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll see you guys online. I'll see you guys on Gilded. Bye, everyone.